Every player will tell you that. Any player with a big backside is a problem. He's got a backside that would make most women look anorexic. For the second time in a week, Stephen A. Smith has body shamed another man. Today, it was Boogie Cousins. He's got a, uh, I mean, he's got a backside that would make most women look anorexic. Following suit with his narrative on Andy Ruiz. Yes, he did look like Butterbean. Oh, no, I, I, I'm just talking about how he looked. But he looked like Butterbean, damn it. Teddy Athlete said it best. He took physical fitness back a, a century, all right? That's number one. Failing to credit Ruiz's colossal upset of Anthony Joshua, how his only loss was to Joseph Parker, who took Joshua 12 rounds and then later calling Joshua a glass jaw and the fight a disgrace. Ruiz wrote, I encourage you to do your research before insulting my career. I know boxing isn't your lane, but if you're going to talk about boxing, please study and know what you are saying. Canelo Alvarez added on, another skeptic who allows himself to be swept away by sheer ignorance and fanaticism without the slightest idea of what the sport of boxing is. Worst of all, Smith is rehashing the tough times Ruiz suffered from back in the day when he was a kid and when he was made fun of because of his weight. Smith has attacked black men in the NBA for wearing hoodies. When they played against Boston, J.R. Smith was sitting on that bench in the fourth quarter with a hoodie on. I don't know why the hell Nike made these damn uniforms that have hoods attached to it, by the way. You got a lot of those white folks in the audience that's going to think this is Drayvon Martin being revisited. And I'm not joking about it. When he makes statements like this, he doesn't even realize that he's justifying the bigotry and prejudice that some white people feel for black men. Stephen A. Oh, sunk boy. in place. And then he tried backtracking. And I wasn't talking about him wearing a hoodie or doing layup lines, layup drills, or the warm-up line, or, or whatever, the layup line, rather, or whatever. I was talking specifically about the J.R. Smith that was on the bench because he had only played three minutes in the first in the fourth quarter. To which he changed the entire conversation on which he pushed on us in the first place, J.R. Smith stayed on point, blasting Stephen A. on social media, reminding everyone of his lunacy. Remember Eric Reed meeting Malcolm Jenkins prior to the Eagles-Panthers game? Jenkins undercut the movement by Reed and Colin Kaepernick, to which Reed called Jenkins. This is silly. Is that what you told? Yes. Stephen A. Smith ranted this. Malcolm Jenkins and the Players Coalition co-opted the situation. Well, how did they co-opt it? You had your issues in support of Colin Kaepernick. They were saying the issue is bigger than Colin Kaepernick. We appreciate Colin Kaepernick. We spoke to him on many occasions. We tried to get him involved. To which Eric Reed corrected. Malcolm kicked Colin out of the coalition. Um, following the meeting in New York. We are under the impression that Colin Kaepernick's protest led to that meeting with the owners. That is false. Stephen A. Smith doesn't understand the root that trickles a reaction. Let's refresh his memory. How did the movement start? Out of that protest by Colin Kaepernick. He despised Eric Reed because Reed did not shut up and dribble and just take the money. He might as well say the same about Michael Bennett or Russell Okung, who knew what was up and backed out as well. Remember Ray Rice? knocking out his then fiance Janae Palmer, who was visibly out cold, Stephen A had a different reaction. What I've tried to employ the female members of my family, some of whom you all met and talked to and what have you, is that again, and this is what I've done this all my life, let's make sure we don't do anything to provoke wrong actions. He doesn't understand the rules of hockey. Excuse me. It was, they, when it was 21 games, it was really an eight game streak. There are three ties. I'm sorry, that doesn't count. I'm not into the tie business. This isn't soccer. Last time I checked, when you get to take to the ice, it's to actually win. And has attacked LeBron James without knowing rules of the NBA. You don't need to be having veto trade power if you KCP. What's that wrong with that picture? I don't know. Uh, there's only one reason he could have gotten that. And we know why. Stephen A goes after LeBron simply because it's easy. In the CBA, when a player has a qualifying offer, they earn a one-year bird right, which also gives the player the luxury of veto power. Maybe the most egregious of all was when this drunk nonpartisan judge went in front of the Senate. Christine Blasey Ford had to revisit her troubling past in front of the Senate, but Stephen A wasn't having it. High school. Supreme Court justice nominee. And they talk about something that might, might, might have happened in high school. Lord have mercy, this country. To make light of Blasey Ford's situation, 
and in a tone that speaks to her fabricating a story or even bringing up a haunting, disturbing, life-altering situation and that she should get over it is fireable. It would not be the first time Smith victim blamed and it likely won't be the last. I respect his hustle. I respect Stephen A's journey to becoming a self-made millionaire. We should all strive for the success he's had. However, not everyone is perfect. There are always bumps in the road, but in the words of LeBron James, Stephen A. Be better tomorrow.